this is the RPG Crawler, and welcome to another shelf of many things. I'm still touching on a number of old school retro clones, and this time I'm going to take a look at one that, honestly, I had very little intention of looking at initially, save for completion's sake. See, while not all OSR games are retro clones, a fair few pillars of that approach are, and most retro clone RPGs, call them clones, simulacrums, or whatever, seek to mimic a particular version of the most popular fantasy RPG from years past. Sometimes they include house rules or changes, sometimes they include adaptations to make them easier to play, but each one seeks to capture the same feel, if not the same presentation, as one particular version of the game. Michael Thomas's Blue Home, whether it be the Prentice rules or the Journeyman rules, seems to have chosen a particular version of the old school rules that is often overlooked, that being the specific box set edited by Holmes and released back in 1977. And that presents some curious context, because that particular version only really went to level 3 and was supposed to be not only a cleaned up and restated version of the original white box rules, but also a potential lead in to the then upcoming AD&D game. As such, it had differences from the original game, differences from the eventual AD&D game that would come out, as well as differences from the later Moldvay Cook version. Differences not only in the mechanics, but also in the approach to the game in general, taking a more narrative approach than the more rules-intensive AD&D would eventually take. Blue Holmes seeks to devise a game that feels just like that, taking its clues from the differences introduced in the Holmes version for the Prentice rules, and then expanding that to a full 20 levels for the Journeyman rules. I have to say that it certainly does feel different. Now this review will cover the Journeyman rules, which is available in both print and PDF, which I mentioned do go up to level 20. The Prentice rules are available separately and are effectively a subset of the Journeyman rules. As always, I will start with an explanation of the physical version, which I ended up picking up on demand from Lulu, and then give a summary overlook of the system chapter by chapter before settling in with my thoughts on the overall game itself. Now, I'm not going to have as much footage of the interior pages this go around as I usually do because the design is pretty consistent throughout and there's very little, you know, that'll really grab attention beyond just an overlook of the interior design. Now, the version I got, being the Journeyman Rules, is a reasonably sturdy soft cover book with full color cover art that is a definite callback to the cover of the D&D box set it emulates, including a dragon in the same style with the same facial uh, aspects, as well as these adventurers down here, of which at least one of them resembles one of the two adventurers on the original cover art of the version it seeks to mimic. Now, the interior is about 116 pages of black and white, two-column text interspersed with the occasional table or black and white illustration in an old-school style. I will say that a lot of these retro clones, since it does seem to be pretty tried-and-true method, follow the same kind of thing, but I will admit that there seems to be marginally more consistent artwork throughout this book than I've seen in some other simulacrum-style books in terms of the same feel, I mean, with a few exceptions, of course. Blue Holm Journeyman Rules begins with a foreword from Chris Holmes, son of Dr. John Eric Holmes, the editor of the version it's seeking to emulate, and then gets right into the book proper. The Journeyman Rules are split into eight parts, the Introduction, Character Creation and Abilities, Spells, Adventures and Adventuring Rules, Encounters and Combat, Creatures, Treasure, and then Campaigns. The introduction covers what you'd expect with a basic overview of role-playing in general, a summary of the contents, speaking to various types of levels, dealing with rounding and multiplication rules, the latter of which is overlooked in many retro clones, I, I must admit, and then finally some talk about how the rules are really guidelines, reinforcing the more narrative focus. The character section starts with character creation rules, which use the standard 3d6 in order method of generating the classic six stats, but also provides some optional ability score generation. Of note is that ability scores in Blue Holm follow the original D&D white box idea of having very limited ranges of bonuses for most ability scores, with some ability scores having no real effect whatsoever. Neither Strength nor Wisdom, for instance, have a listed effect outside of providing an experience bonus to those classes that use them as prime requisites. Yeah, that's right, there's no effect of Strength on any sort of combat. Species is also discussed in character creation, except that there are no races set aside as you can play these. Rather, if you wish to play a non-human, you are encouraged to select one with your GM's approval from the monster list in the creature section. Classes include the four basic classes, Cleric, Fighter, Magic User, and Thief, although there are provisional rules for multi-classing as well. 
Each class has a brief description, a full 20 level progression, and a description of any special abilities that they may have, followed by details on any strongholds they may build and the benefits they may get thereof. This is actually kind of important to look through even for veterans of other RPGs of a similar theme since a few abilities have been altered in Blueholm. For instance, fighters get a damage bonus on their attacks, effectively replacing both the strength bonus and any additional attacks that other retro clones might provide them. Clerics get a full 7 spell levels and magic users get a full 9, although progression may be a little different from what one may be used to as well if one's used to other retro clones. After classes are covered, rules for combination classes or multi-classing are discussed, and then languages and alignment are touched on. Languages are pretty straightforward, including the basic alignment languages common in these older school things, but alignments themselves have been limited to the five al alignment matrix from the Holmes edition, dispensing with the neutral alignments, except for true neutral. So what you have left are things like lawful and chaotic good, lawful and chaotic evil, and then neutral itself. There's some talk about adjusting class hit dice according to the base hit dice of the creature type that you choose if you do a non-human character, and then the standard starting coinage and equipment list. In this case, the equipment list is pretty simple because weapons are assumed to all do 1d6 damage. There is a helpful description of a number of equipment items, however, if you're not used to those things. Part 3 is spells, and it covers spell casting and preparing various spells, as well as rules for magical books and creating new spells. And then it goes into the description of each spell in turn. They're divided up by class and level, and each spell has a name, range, duration, and then a description of what it does. Very simple, all in all. However, again, players of other versions and other old school systems and retro clones really need to be on the lookout here. Due to Blue Home taking the Holmes edition as its main source, a number of spells that might appear in other retro clones or other modern editions may have either completely different names or even different effects while still bearing the same name. Some may even appear on different levels than you'd expect. Part 4, The Adventures, covers the various rules for exploration and such. Blue Home divides the rules into three main categories, ones used in the realm, which cover the civilized areas, the wilderness, which is the self-explanatory wilderness outside of civilized areas, and then the underworld, which are your dungeons and such. Blue Home Time covers turns and rounds, as in most old school variations, however, turns will actually shrink down in duration once combat starts, thus offering a bit of a split between the historical time scales common in other versions. Rules for various types of movements and dealing with various obstacles like lighting, listening for noise, and dealing with doors follow. Blue Home uses a different scale for indoor and outdoor ranges on missile weapons and movement as is common with many old school systems, which is covered in this system as well. Rules for various water and aerial travel follow, as well as for evading pursuit and getting lost. And then there's talk about upkeep, which is simply a general living expense fee per month based on the total experience the character has earned. There's rules for building strongholds and hiring retainers and hirelings in this section as well, before it closes out with a discussion of experience and level gain, with most experience being assumed to be earned from treasure. Part 5 covers rules for encounters, including random table samples for both wilderness and underworld exploration, and then rules for surprise and monster reactions, followed by combat rules in general. Rules which should be pretty familiar to players of other old school retro clones, although there are some minor numerical differences. It is assumed that all weapon attacks use a d6 damage, although there is an optional rule for different types of weapons that use different damage and number of attacks. However, in this case, they aren't really different damage dice, but simply different ways of generating a number between 1 and 6 weighted on the weapon type. Also of note is the uh, unique initiative system Blueholm uses, ordering the combats by uh, dexterity. There's a fair number of minor rules as well, such as for parrying and firing into melee, pretty well-rounded really, and then there's a list of special attacks such as poison, burning oil, and so forth. A nice example of combat, including surprise segments, follow, which is actually very useful in clarifying some things, and it seems that Blue Home uses the classic five categories of saving throws that most OSR people have come to know. The next part covers creatures, and there's some basic guidelines for converting any particular creature to a playable species, including larger hit dice type creatures. Special abilities of various monsters are then discussed before the standard creature list begins. Each creature is listed by name, has an AC, hit die, movement, attacks, damage per attack if it varies from a d6, experience value, treasure category, and possibly ability modifiers if they're probably going to be used by a player. Then there is a description of the monster and any special attacks or tactics they may use. 
Again, this may be worth looking at because a lot of the monsters are not necessarily a huge amount of the monsters, but a fair amount of the monsters differ from their classic D&D based creatures. Part 7 covers treasure, which uses numbered treasure categories, but is otherwise quite similar to other old school treasure designations, with various percentages of each coin type appearing, jewels appearing, and then a chance to have certain numbers of magic items in the treasure. There's a fair amount of magic items which generally follow what you might see in other old school versions and retro clones, except that some things are handled just a little bit differently. Weapon and armor bonuses range down to minus 5 and up to plus 5, while the various different types of weapon and armor abilities are a little bit unusual compared to the standard types that you'd see in other retro clones. Also, a number of items have completely different effects due to changes in the ability score system and other mechanics in Blueholm. For example, things that would normally boost your strength might simply boost your weapon damage dice instead, since strength has no real adjustments behind it. There are a few items that seem new and unique as well, although they may just be me not having as encyclopedic a knowledge of RPGs as I thought I did. I was pleasantly surprised to see quite a number of cursed items among the tables as well. This chapter concludes with some basic guidelines on magic item creation. The final part of the book is the campaign section, which gives guidelines on designing adventures and long-term campaigns, as well as designing and stocking a dungeon, a wilderness area, and then the realm at large. This chapter concludes with some DM's miscellany, usually uh, things like using ability scores to determine outcomes, adding classes, like entirely new classes, and so on and so forth. So, Blue Home is odd in that it is as written and presented, as nostalgic and old school as any other retro clone I've looked at, offering a good and solid foundation for your classic dungeon crawl, as well as various wilderness adventures. In essence, it feels like an old school D&D game, but the differences in the Holmes version and the loose rule set that encourages a more narrative style does lend a sort of different feel while reading through it and while running it. The ability to convert basically any species listed in the creature section into a player character also provides a certain gonzo feel in some instances that is a callback to the early days of role-playing. The writing itself is to the point and clear, and that's commendable for any sort of role-playing game, old school or not. I believe it would be relatively easy to pick up and run for anyone who is passingly familiar with role-playing games. I believe that the author did a fair job in extrapolating an entire rule set from a very limited starting point, and it certainly does differ even from the relatively closely sourced retro clones out there as a result. I personally can't see me using it as much as I might use some other simulacrums like Swords and Wizardry or Labyrinth Lord, but that's no fault of the system itself, just my personal preferences. Blue Home lends itself to a particular play style, one that is more on the rules light side, although there are certainly rules aplenty to see as guidelines, and one that is less about character optimization in combat and more about decision making in general and free from actions although there are certainly thorough combat rules in there. The limited ability score adjustment range, the sameness and damage output among the various creatures and characters, all contribute to differentiating characters by their actions and their personality rather than their builds. And I can appreciate that for what it is, even if I personally tend to kind of mix both personality and build differentiation in my personal types of games. I will say that Blue Home is different enough from other retro clones to provide a breath of fresh air for those who are looking to play an OSR style game but whose group already knows most of the other systems forwards and backwards. It will provide just enough changes to maybe provide some surprises for that sort of group. Anyway, on that note, I'll leave it off here. I'll put links to where you can pick up the various versions in the description below. For now, this has been the RPG Crawler with my review of Blue Home Journeyman Rules. If you like what you've seen, remember to leave a like. Comment if you got any feedback, and subscribe for more RPG content, both tabletop and computer. Until next time, take care and goodbye. And if you're still watching this far, I'd like to take a moment to thank those who have supported this channel via Patreon or direct donations throughout the years, without which this channel could not have lasted as long as it has. For those who are feeling particularly generous, you can still support my work through Patreon and now through Subscribestar as well, through the links in the description below.